week is just all about um, incorporating science literacy into our daily lives and thinking about science um, and where we kind of use it in our everyday life. So um, today specifically, we're going to be talking about phytoplankton. So I've kind of found that phytoplankton is kind of misunderstood um, because one thing that's really cool about it is it's something that's not a plant or an animal. Um, phytoplankton are actually under the classification of protists. And um, protists are uh, any cells that do not fit the classification of a plant or an animal or a fungus. So they're kind of neat. They kind of show characteristics of both. Um, so we're going to be modeling them on some 3D design software today. So we're going to be using something called Tinkercad. Um, I'll put a link just in, oh, sorry, just checking the chat. Oh, you guys can't hear me? Okay, some people can't. Awesome. Um, so let me just put the link in the chat. So if you all go there, um, I think it asks you to make an account, but you don't actually have to. So when you go to that website, um, let me see. Yeah, so it should come up and it should say, uh, start tinkering or join class. There should be those two options there. And um, just make sure you click on join your class. And once you do that, it'll ask for a classroom code. Um, and I guess I can just share my screen and show you guys the code. Where did I just There we go. So if y'all put that classroom code in when it asks, um, you can join the class. Oh, if you already have one, um, you can just, uh, once I send you the link for the uh, blueprints, uh, you can just start a new project on your own and um, just copy them over like that. You don't need to join the class, which is kind of nice. Um, and once you do join the class, it'll ask for nicknames. Um, so like, what's your nickname? Um, I have to have these all preset. So the available names, sorry, I'm just typing this in the chat, two are one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 etc. So I think it goes all the way up to nine, nine, nine. But if it's just asking you for a nickname, that's what that means. So um, I will do this. So there is the classroom code in the chat in case you guys need that, just because I'm going to go back. So here are all the nicknames. Available. But what we are going to do, um, should I start? Yeah, so I'll introduce something that we're going to get back to uh, later on. Oh, the link's still loading. That's all right. I'm going to make it wait for you. So um, I'm going to stop sharing this tab just so I can share another one. But something else that we're going to do today is I have here we have some just some sea creatures loaded up into Tinkercad. So we have a humpback whale, a seal, uh, a harbor seal specifically great white shark, an octopus, and a snail. And um, this is just so we can get a bit better scale of the phytoplankton we designed today and just kind of life in the ocean. So um, if we zoom in here all the way down, um, you can see there is a snail. And this snail is 
three centimeters across. So that's, I would say that's pretty average for a snail. That's about yay big, maybe an inch. Uh, you hold your fingers out. Um, but then you can kind of see the octopus, not huge, but a little bit bigger. Also a mollusk, which is interesting. Um, but then once you move out, you kind of see um, the average size of a great white or a humpback whale. Um, just kind of puts it more into perspective. Um, so we're going to be adding our plankton to that um, just in a little bit there. Awesome. So let's get back to the plankton. So one thing that is important here, um, I'll just get you guys to, once you've joined the class, um, just hit create a new design. And what should come up um, is something just like this, just a blank work plane um, with a few of the basic shapes to the side, just because we're going to copy and paste um, all of the pieces of our cells into it because I have one link um, that's all the blueprints and any edits we make on it will edit all of them. So like if you move one of the, one of the pieces, it's going to move for everybody's. So we're just going to want to copy and paste over. Um, so let me just generate a link for that one. Copy link. So if you guys want to watch this, I'm just going to copy from the blueprint and paste into it. Um, so you're just going to do that for all of the pieces. Um, oh, oh uh, yeah. There's another one. Um, but you're just going to want to copy and paste them over individually so it doesn't mess anything up. Do so. Um, there, I've put the link in the chat. So if you want to click that link, that is the um, kind of the master blueprints. Um, so just make sure you aren't changing any of the sizes of the things there um, or like getting rid of them or anything, just because we all have to use that same one. Uh, if you do change the size of something or something, uh, don't worry about it too much because I do have a few backups that are unedited um, just in case. Oops. There we go. So, um, uh, just let me know when you guys have all of your pieces all set in. Um, yeah, there should be eight individual things that you copy and paste over. Got it. Awesome. So now what we can do is uh, start building our plant cell. Um, so we're going to go individually by each organelle and kind of talk about um, what they all do within the cell. So first things first is this little orange guy. So you can move it in. Um, you know what? Maybe let's make this guy bigger too. So I'm just going to move some of my pieces out of the way. There we go. 
There we go. Now if we grab our big uh, circle, which is just the uh, cytoplasm of the cell and the wall, then that looks good. So this is our cell membrane um, around the outside that is holding the insides of our cell together. And then that empty space in the middle is just called the cytoplasm. So that's just anything inside the cell is inside the cytoplasm, unless it's in one of these organelles that we're putting in here. So um, what you're going to want to do is just drag them in individually. Oops. And it's kind of easy to grab them and make them a little bit wonky. So there that looks up there. And to rotate anything in this, um, you can see these little kind of semicircle um, arrows. Sometimes I don't think you want to type in the amount, but we can just rotate that so it's a little more visible, maybe bring it up a bit. Then we're just going to want to drag this little party hat up uh, just to uh, have it less buried in the bottom there. And that looks pretty good. So that is the nucleus. And the nucleus um, holds all of the DNA, so all of the um, genetic information inside the cell. And we say that the nucleus is kind of like the brain of the cell because that DNA um, then codes for everything that's going to happen within that cell. Um, all that information is stored inside there in the DNA. So next, what we're going to need is if we have this information inside of the nucleus, um, what are we going to what are we going to do with it? How are we going to just take that base information and make stuff happen? So we're going to take this um, little magenta looking uh, ribbon type looking thing, uh, just rotate a bit, and we're going to put it around the nucleus. So this is the endoplasmic reticulum, which is a very, very fun word. Um, but what this does is it just takes the uh, information that's stored in the DNA and it just translates it into proteins. So it's going to uh, unwind the DNA and kind of read it um, like you would a book or any code. Um, and that's just going to turn all that information into individual proteins that will then go around the cell and do stuff. Um, so that is how our DNA gets transcribed and translated. A little bit. There's also two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum, even though um, for our purposes here, we just have one. Um, and that is the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So the rough one just has uh, little, little things they call ribosomes that help it make proteins. And uh, that's really the only difference there. I'll make this one a little higher. Just for fun. No, I just want to rotate. There we are. That looks pretty good. So what we can do next is we have all these proteins um, that are transcribed from our DNA's code. Uh, and what if we want to move them out of the cell? We don't want them um, inside with all this other stuff. They're actually needed, say, in the bloodstream or something like that. Um, we're going to take this big blue thing, um, and this is called the Golgi apparatus, which is uh, also a kind of fun name, but all the Golgi apparatus does is it has these little folds and the folds kind of like go along like almost like a conveyor belt. Um, they just kind of grow outwards. And um, when they're growing outwards like that inside, they'll have the proteins and then they'll deposit them outside the cell wall or um, just move them anywhere they got to go. Uh -huh. 
I'm going to move some stuff around in my cell just because I want the Golgi to have a place to hang out. Twist. And how about that? That looks nice. I might also make it a little wider. Oops. There we are. That looks pretty good. So, um, yeah, now we have ways of synthesizing proteins and kicking them out of the cell once we're uh, done with them or if they gotta go anywhere else. But uh, one thing we haven't considered is all of that stuff uses a lot of energy. And how are we going to make energy? Um, so we're gonna, we have two options actually, which is kind of fun. Um, because we are protists, um, this or this cell is protists. Why don't we think this is protists? We are. Um, but because it's not a plant nor an animal, uh, it has two options. It has chloroplasts and mitochondria. Plants also do have mitochondria, but they just don't do as much work. So uh, we can copy, let's have maybe three mitochondria in there. Um, and these will be randomly distributed without, uh, throughout the cell, um, but for purposes, it's easy to just clump them together. And what the mitochondria does is it will synthesize a, something called ATP, and that's just kind of the energy currency of the shell, or of the cell, is ATP. Um, you need ATP. Um, for example, to flex our muscles or to move our muscles. Um, there are little strands within the muscle tissue. Um, and it kind of works like little hooks, um, moving like that, pulling it closer together. But every time it does a pulling motion, it gets stuck. And to unhook it, you need ATP. Um, that chemical will go in and unbind that receptor. Um, and that's just our muscles as an example. But it's also used to um, like transcribe the DNA um, that takes energy. And we'll use ATP. So we can now start adding our chloroplasts. So the reason that plants are green, um, the reason why I pick up these flowers, these stems are green, is these chloroplasts that are in plants. So we're going to add a few of these um, just because they are important and because it lets the plant photosynthesize, um, which is creating oxygen, which we need to breathe. So we might as well add a lot of chloroplast to our model, make it a little bit better, make an air. Um, and a cool thing about phytoplankton is they actually produce over, um, sorry, over 50% of the oxygen that's in the air. So if you take a deep breath in, um, over 50% of the oxygen that you just breathed in will have come from the ocean um, and not from land. And honestly, living in the Maritimes, it's probably quite a bit more in terms of vintage just because we're right beside the ocean. And that is making a lot of oxygen for us. Um, so do, do. we got all of our chloroplasts in there. Um, and now that we've added the chloroplasts, I'm also going to change the color of my phytoplankton just because I think that looks more fun. So um, this is kind of a basic looking cell. We can't really distinguish it from anything else. Um, just kind of looks like a cell. So we're going to make it look like a phytoplankton. 
Um, but we're going to do two kinds of phytoplankton specifically. So I'll just tell you guys a little bit about them first. Um, so here is uh, the first one we can make. Uh, it's called a coccolithophore, uh, which is kind of a fun name. Um, and these are really, really tiny single-celled, uh, I guess not single-celled organisms. Um, and they have these little discs on them, which look kind of like somebody glued a bunch of CDs to the, to the outside of it. But um, what's really interesting about these is those plates on the outside are actually made of chalk. Yeah, so coccolithophore. That's just, it's a long name, but it's just a certain kind of phytoplankton. And uh, something that's kind of cool is the cliffs of Dover in, um, in England. They have these very famous white cliffs, um, and they're all white just because of all these little phytoplankton. Um, having those white shells on the side and uh, that there was so many of them that actually covered the entire cliff face. So um, we can start with modeling that one and then we will get on to the other one a little later. So if we go to, I think this one, right? Yep, cool. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a really big box over all of these um, so it should highlight every single thing inside there. And we're just going to hit this, um, or you can press Control G. Um, and what that does is it's going to group it all together. Um, so now, yeah, we can move it all as one piece. Um, and it won't come apart into all of its individual ones. And we're going to take this little party hat, and we're just going to drag this up a bit um, because right now it's it's three dimensional, but uh, we're just kind of looking at a slice of the cell, and we're going to make it a full um, full piece. So we can now ungroup those if we like. Um, and we're going to go down and get a half sphere. There we are. So once we have this little guy, we can flip it. Um, come on. Uh, we're just going to click this, and we're going to turn it 180 degrees. So fully upside down. We're just checking the chat, make sure y'all. And then we can start making it bigger so it'll attach to the bottom of our cell. Now this might be easier. Do it like this. So this part's kind of tricky. You're just kind of, um, you're just trying to fit this to the bottom of our plankton as well as you can, um, just without it going over too much. That looks pretty good, I think. Nice. I am going to do this. I'm just going to pull it up a bit. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking the look of that. So that's kind of tricky. Um, Tinkercad is hard, uh, a little bit hard to work with, um, just in terms of moving stuff around. But now I'm just going to select these two and hopefully I can group them. There we are. 
So now we have a full shell on the outside. Now we have our three dimensional um, thing, but we are going to want our little plates on the outside. So I'm going to grab the diamond shape um, that is in these basic shapes. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, it'll say diamond. Um, and we can just uh, place one of those, flip it 180 degrees. Um, now, this is kind of the tricky part because we're going to want to attach this to the side of our plankton, but it's kind of a pain in terms of rotating everything into the right way. So bring this up. That looks like a good angle there, um, kind of. Um, so I think at this point, all of ours are going to look a little different just because getting these plates on um, is a little bit tricky. And um, we'll probably all have ones that are at slightly different angles um, and positions of the plate. That's OK. There, we've got one of them. Um, and at this point, if you have a size um, and shape you like, you can just copy and paste these. Just save a bit of time. Now they also will blend together a little bit, but that's all right because the, um, the shells that grow on coccolithophores also kind of uh, mesh together and create this full coating around the outside. Mm -hmm. Just trying to turn this one fully. Come on, let's get that in. There we go. Just want that upside down. Just we can slap it on the bottom. Awesome. I like the look of this thus far. Um, so one thing I am going to do is make a big box, get everything in there, all 22. Um, group it together. And now we're just going to copy and paste. Um, so we have two um, 
just so we can move it all the way up. We're going to flip it 180 degrees and just kind of sandwich the two together. And we'll have completed our first one thing. Let's see. And there we go. So they can see our plankton. If we zoom in, can we see the inside? Ah, not quite, but that's okay. I didn't really expect that to be possible. So once we have these guys, we can group all 44 together. I'm also going to make this green if possible. Oh wait, I guess it shouldn't be green. It should be... Yep. Um, and now, uh, how should I do this actually? Yeah, so um, in a new tab, I'm going to share the um, sea life to scale. And then again, if y'all just want to um, create a new, oh, what was I saying? Uh, create a new design, and then we can just and paste everything in from the sea life to scale one, um, uh, just because it'll edit for all of them, and then we can add our plankton into it. So. Let me just post the link for that. Yeah, so that one should work. Um, if you just want to copy and paste the uh, whale, the octopus, the seal, and the shark, um, it should stay all the same size, um, so you shouldn't have to worry about uh, rescaling any of it. What is going on here? Sorry, my program's just getting a bit.
Perfect. So now I can stop sharing that one, start sharing. Cool. So um, let me grab my plankton and I can add that to everything else. So as you can see, if that were to scale, that doesn't really make sense. So we're going to make it a little small. Now the scale I have this set to um, is, if you see here as I move them, we have a number there, 86 and 109. That is centimeters. So if we click on the whale, um, it is 1,200 centimeters long. Um, so that is 12 meters, right? Yes. What to think about that? Um, and there we can see our snail. So we're going to want to make our point really, really tiny. Uh, in fact, um, I'm just going to put this in the middle so we can see it. Oh, where did it? What? What just happened? Just kidding. So we're going to want this direction. So a coccolithophore is, uh, we'll say this one is a hundred micrometers across. So the largest species of a coccolithophore is 100 micrometers across, so we have to use that. Um, and that is also the smallest that our scale goes on Tinkercad. So we are going to want both our width and our uh, length to be 0 0.001. Um, and we are, come on. we're going to want our height to be 0. 0 .0, or 0 0.01 as well. So you can see here, uh, oh, where to go? Clicking this is going to be a pain. No. Oh, no. Shoot. Um, no. Come here. Just going to make this bigger so I can move it. Um, and again, 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Oh no, get back here. I think that's it. Yeah, so there we go. There is our coccolithophore to scale. Um, and you can see that size now compared with a whale. So it's very, 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 very tiny. Um, I'm sure it also even looks too big. These are real, real small. What about the pink shark? Oh, how long is that? Sorry, I know that makes it seem like I haven't looked at the chat. The shark is 457 centimeters, so that's 4.5 meters, um, which is about 15 feet. So that's not even the biggest great whites get. Um, they get around 25 feet uh, long, but still. So now that we have done our coccolithophore, we can design our next one, our dinoflagellum. So I'm going to stop sharing this. Um, so we can go back to this one, right? Yep. So now if we go back to our coccolithophore, we can just ungroup all this. Um, we can start deleting these plates. Because our dinoflagellate's not going to have any plates on it. Oh, come on. Oh, 
sorry, guys, two seconds. I'm back. So, all plates, all plates coming. You can also see uh, now that we've gotten all those off there that I really didn't do a great job putting these together. Um, so we can kind of fix that now, kind of make it a better circle. I think that looks pretty good. Um, and now I'm just going to group them back together um, just so nothing runs amok. Work. Is it? Hello? No. Come on. Everything. Everything. Oh no. Does it work? No. Tinkercad software is sometimes eh, not great. Give me it all. Group it all. Okay, so we're just going to ignore that. And we're just going to keep going. All of the guts of our cell might fall out when we <laughs> move it. That's okay. So we are going to want to make this into a dinoflagellate. So I should probably show you guys what that looks like because it's kind of tricky. So this is what they look like. So we have a bit of a challenge ahead of ourselves. Um, so what they're mainly uh, associated with are these horns that they have. So they have one on the top. This one specifically has three on the bottom. And the uh, word dinoflagellate uh, is important because it has this back part, flagellate, and that just means they have this little hair that sticks out of the cell, and that's just so they can swim around by uh, whipping that around. Um, so yeah, so I'll go down. So yeah, here we have a variety of options. So I'm just kind of, kind of going to go for a shape like one of those two, um, this guy there, just to make it as simple as we can. Um, it's going to be kind of tricky. Cool. So let's head back to our 3D design. Oh, wait. Oops. I forgot another fun fact about dinoflagellates. Um, they, um, so there's two, well, there's two general kinds of feeding strategies that we talk about. Um, and that is heterotrophy and, uh, let's see, heterotrophy. oh, and autotrophy. So autotrophy just means um, you're making your own food so that's what plants do when they photosynthesize, is they're creating their own sugars um, automatically. Uh, and then heterotrophy is just your eating stuff. So if I drink this Pepsi, I've consumed food heterotrophically. But dinoflagellates can do both. So that's called mixotrophy, because it's a mix of the two. Um, so they'll eat other cells, but yet at the same time, they'll also photosynthesize, which is really interesting. Um, it's kind of what we see in like coral reefs, but not really because they have to have two different organisms to do this. Uh, dinoflagellates can just do it by themselves. So let me share. Do, do, do. Back to this one. So, um, 
do we want to do this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, this one called a paraboloid. Um, and we're going to throw that on top um, just so uh, we get more of a pointy little horn like shape. Do. Um, yeah, that looks good. Um, and if we look back on the Wikipedia, you can also see it's kind of angled back. Um, so I'm going to do my best to emulate that by angling this one uh, back just a little bit. How about, say, eight? Come here. How about by 15 degrees? There we go. Looks like kind of a fun little party hat. Voila. So there we're starting to change the shape um, of ourself a little bit. Just gonna make it a little bigger. Um, there, I'm liking the look of that. There we go. So that looks better. Um, I'm also going to add two more of those that are going to go on the bottom. Um, so we're going to flip this 180. And another one. So I'm going to drag these guys over there. And we can get some different angles. Ah. Um, one thing I do wish Tinkercad had was like a better camera. It's annoying using this little box thing um, every time I want to get a new perspective. Um, so I'm going to turn this 90 degrees. And we're going to just slide it back there. How's that looking? Um, I like that, but I think I'm going to move it up a little bit. Um, no, there's no way I meant to do. So we're going to go back. Maybe make it a bit taller as well. Um, let's see how that makes it look. So you can see um, this is a bit time consuming and uh, it's one of the kind of annoying things about computer design. It just takes a while. That being said, I'm pretty sure nearly 100% of things that are getting designed these days are with computer design software. It's just infinitely easier than drawing this stuff up by hand, um, especially when computers can do stuff like uh, calculating angles um, and stuff like that. That's really intense calculations for a person to do. I'm not long in any of these. Yeah, so I saved the dinoflagellate here. Um, I'm kind of more at the end just because it's such a pain. Mm -hmm. There we go. I think I'm. I think I'm kind of happy with that. Looks kind of like a character in Fall Guys, but that's okay. So I'm um, going to group together uh, most of these and bring it up. And I'm going to ungroup it just because I want these to like bigger. 
I shouldn't call them legs. They aren't legs. But, yeah. Yeah. That looks bad. Where'd it go? And There we go. I'm liking the look of that. Um, and now we're just going to add some, where'd they go? Some little cones um, for all the tips of those. Because one thing about dinoflagellates is one of their strategies to not get eaten is to just be kind of pointy. Um, it's kind of like the same as like a hedgehog or a porcupine. But it's just for really, really tiny stuff. And uh, I guess it only works being pointy if the thing eating you is also really tiny. Because I'm pretty sure I could eat a diet flagellate and not notice that it's poking me. There we go. And I'm going to change the color of these all to that fun green. Come on. Now we're going to do these other ones. Flip it 180. I think the most frustrating thing about computer design is that it's not like an Iron Man where he can do it in 3D space. It's really annoying working with 3D objects, it's like you're confined to this two-dimensional computer screen. Uh, yeah, it's just my wall. Keep it. There we go. Now we got well. Little spikes on them. Little spike. Ugh. Okay, I think I'm done fiddling with it. Very happy with that. Um, so we can do all these. Let's group them all up. I'm also going to change color. I've decided to. Well, it looks like that's working, but it's not changing the color. So let's take a look at Now um, I'm just going to take this little scribble tool um, ah, and we're just going to scribble out a flagellum so our dinoflagellate can swim 
Um, mine's just going to look like that. Seems good. Where? Okay. That's, that's what. Come on, move. I'm going to get bigger. Move it up. And just gonna plop it in. Hey, right there. And there we have our flagellum sandwiched in there. And we can come get off. Good one. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore the flagellum just so we can add this to our scale um, before we run out of time here. So now we'll go back to our uh, sea like to scale one. Um, and we will copy and paste over our dinoflagellum. So it's going to be really, really big. Um, but we're just going to want to make this tinier, um, just so it can be there. And uh, dinoflagellates, um, if we want to go by the same metric that we did with Cogolithophore, where we're just going to pretend this is the biggest species that there is, um, the biggest species of dinoflagellate only gets to be about 2,000 micrometers. Um, so we're going to dimensions and we're just going to make it 0 0.2 by 0 0.2. Um, I'll make it a little taller, um, maybe about 0 0.4, uh, just because that way it'll keep its geometry. And look at that, I managed to do that. So, now if we zoom in all the way, you can kind of make out its shape next to the snail. But um, yeah, that's a really small point. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of the absolute smallest life in the ocean to the biggest life in the ocean, even though this is a humpback whale, it's not a blue whale. Um, I couldn't find any 3D models for the blue whale, sadly. Um, but you know what? Maybe we'll change it to the size of a blue whale um, to kind of get the idea. So this is a humpback whale. We're going to want to stretch him out a little bit. Uh, let's see. Two, two, one, do you? Oh, no, geez. 25 meters, which is 2,500 um, centimeters. And we're also going to make it a little bit more tall. Give them a bit. And a little bit wider as well. So, just in terms of the scale of things, blue whales are really big. You can see that um, next to even a great white, and that is a very, very large animal. The biggest animal to ever live, ever, which is your fun fact of the day. So uh, it's 5 o'clock, so that concludes our science literacy webinar. Um, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned a little bit more about uh, Protus, what a protist is. Remember, it's any cellular uh, organism that is not a fungus, animal, or plant.
and got a little bit more appreciation for the size of stuff in the ocean. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you had fun and I hope you all stay safe um, after the hurricane, which was even a hurricane and was pretty, pretty light. Bye y'all, have a good one.